Hi, welcome to Spice Box. Today we'll learn how to make the Goan Sorak curry. During the monsoons when it's raining heavily and fishes are hard to get, usually the Goans prepare the Sorak curry at their homes. This is a comfort food and it's mildly spicy and tangy in taste. The Goan Sorak curry is usually had along with any dry fish or with any veggies which is prepared at home. It is had along with pav, roti or along with rice. Let's quickly learn how to make this very tasty Goan Sorak curry. Let us quickly have a look at the ingredients needed for preparing this Goan Sorak curry. For this I have about 2 sliced onions, 1 cup of grated coconut, turmeric powder, kokum which is predominantly used to add tanginess in the Goan recipes, slit green chilies, whole coriander, whole cumin, pods of garlic, Kashmiri red chilli whole, salt. Let's start making the Sorak curry. For this we have to prepare a paste and for that I have soaked these red chilies in hot water for about half an hour so that I can make a paste of it very easily. Now I'm going to add in all the ingredients required for making the paste one by one into the mixer jar. First of all I'm going to add in the soaked red chilies. Here I have about two sliced onions and I'm going to use half of it for the paste and the rest of it I'm going to reserve it for making the curry. To this I will add in the grated coconut. And then a little by little I'm going to add in the whole spices, the cumin, about a teaspoon of it. A teaspoon of coriander, the garlic pods, about four to five of them, a little bit of turmeric powder, and now I'm going to add in a little bit of water and make a smooth paste of this. I have a pan which I have placed for heating, and to it I've added oil. Usually we use coconut oil for preparing the sorak curry, but here I'm using white oil. Once the oil has heated up, to this I'm going to add in the pieces of reserved onions. I'm going to saute it till it turns translucent. Once the onion has turned translucent to it, I'm going to add in the ground masala paste. I'll saute this masala on medium flame for about 5 minutes until the raw smell of this masala goes away. While this masala is frying, I will make a paste with this kokum. If kokum is not available, you can use tamarind or you can use tomatoes to add tanginess to this sorak curry. So I'll take the kokum and I'll add a little bit of water. And like we make the tamarind paste, I will make a paste of this. Now the raw smell of this masala has disappeared. To this I will add in water. Based on the consistency we want the curry to be in, we will add water. To this I will add in the slit green chilies and also the kokum paste that I have prepared. Based on the tanginess that you want, you can add the quantity of kokum paste. Now I will check the seasoning. I'll add salt according to the taste and then I'll let this boil on a medium flame for about 5 to 10 minutes. The sorak curry has now simmered for about 5 minutes and now it's time to serve it out. Usually the sorak curry is made in traditional earthen pots but since we don't have them regularly at our homes, we can use any other pan at our homes. We can also add any vegetables of our choices to this or you can just simply make the gravy of this and have it along with pav, roti or with rice. Try this sorak curry at your homes during the monsoons and I'm sure your family will just love it. Mm -hmm.